the amniotic sac is a structure that protects the embryo uh, and cushions the embryo against any injury. For the first time, our lab managed to create 3D structures that resemble the human amniotic sac. These are structures that we called PGAs, that stand for post-castrulation amnioids. My name is Silvia Santos. I am a quantitative stem cell biologist, and I'm very interested in how cells make decisions. The leading author of this study is a principal scientist in the lab called Borzo Garibi. But this was really a team effort between our lab and several labs at the creek. We still don't know everything about uh, early human development. The amniotic sac has been classically thought to have more of a passive role. Scientists, including ourselves, have been starting to think that potentially the amniotic sac has more roles than what we had previously anticipated. Several research groups have previously attempted to make amniotic sac or amniotic-like structure. However, these structures were limited due to the fact they were formed of only one cell layer or they could only survive in the lab for only a few days. The first step in making PGAs is to use human embryonic stem cells. We can also do PGAs from induced pluripotent stem cells, and these are cells from adult individuals that can be brought back to a more embryonic state. The first step is to collect the embryonic stem cell from liquid nitrogen store. We then take this to the lab. We put them in culture so they can grow for a couple of weeks. The next step is to treat them in a stepwise manner with two signaling pathways. We do one round of stimulation with low level of BNP. This will encourage the cell to differentiate to inner cell layer of amniotic sac. We do another stimulation with wind agonist Chiron. This will help the cell to differentiate to outer layer of amniotic sac. Next, we plate these cells in 96 well plates. And we put these 96 well plates in the microscope. We can now monitor the cells in the microscope and see these structures grow. The first thing that happens is that they form a yolk sac-like compartment um, and then an amniotic sac-like compartment. The yolk sac compartment tends to shrink with time, whereas the amniotic sac compartment tends to expand. And this is exactly what happens in vivo in a human embryo. We see about 92% reproducibility in these structures. Once we got the PGAs, we could run experiments, for example, to ask what genes are important uh, for the amniotic sac to be formed. So we could do experiments where we activated genes, where we down-regulated genes, that mean when we repressed genes, and see whether the amniotic sacs could still be formed. We found that a transcription factor, a gene called GATA3, was really important for PGA formation. In addition to this, we were very curious to understand what was inside the PGA fluid, because we know that the amniotic fluid is really what surrounds the fetus we investigated what were the small molecules that were inside the PGA fluid. And we were super excited to see that we could actually see about 60% of the small molecules that exist in the actual human uh, amniotic sac. Finally, we mixed PGA cells with embryonic cells that have been untreated to try and understand whether PGA cells could talk to embryonic cells. And when we did this, what we saw was that uh, embryonic stem cells started reorganizing and specializing, and in fact, even making their own amniotic sac. So indeed, this is showing us that there is the potential for the amniotic sac to be talking and modulating embryonic cells. Human amniotic membranes are often used in medical procedures. They have actually been widely used for eye surgeries, for surface reconstruction of the eye. But there are a variety of clinical trials for using human amniotic membrane for things like burns, for example. These membranes are extremely regenerative. They are also anti-scarring and antimicrobial. We aren't sure whether we can use PGAs yet instead of donated human amniotic membranes, but we have started conversations with a translation team at the Francis Crick Institute to try and understand whether uh, PGAs are as suitable in animal models and ultimately to try and understand whether they will be safe for patients. What this work is showing us is that now we have a platform to ask how the environment embryonic cells are in might help modulate those decisions. And I'm really, really excited about being able to ask these questions now moving forward. 
I'm also really genuinely excited about the potential clinical applications about this model and maybe one day being also a really useful platform uh, that helps patients.